Welcome back, y'all. In this video, I will, at long last, make quinacridone. This isn't the last video in the series, as I still have to make quinacridone quinone from quinacridone, then figure out the best way to make quinacridone gold from them. The acronym should be DDAT with an H before the T, since after the fact, I figured out that I'd made primarily the dihydroterephthalate, not the terephthalate. Uh, the boric acid DDAT you see written became three failed attempts, as that reaction was originally conducted with the free acid, not the diethyl ester, so I made some beautifully shitty tar. Those three attempts knocked out almost half of the DDAT I originally made, which is why my previous video was me making more. Instead, I tried one of the cyclization procedures from another patent. First, the diethyl ester is hydrolyzed by refluxing it with sodium hydroxide in methanol. It's set to do it for an hour, but because I was lazy and used the DDAT as chunks instead of grinding it to a powder, I refluxed it for like three hours. I should have used vacuum grease in the joint of the flask, as refluxing a basic solution made it seize. I had to pour it through the condenser and rinse out the flask with a shitload more methanol, then boil it down. It was a lot easier to do all the steps in trying to free the seized joint once it was empty, and it did end up working after I put way too much effort into it. After boiling the solution down, I filtered it, washed it with some methanol, and got this beautiful yellow crystalline solid. I thought there was something worth recovering in the filtrate, so I added hydrochloric acid to it until it was acidic, almost spilling it from how much it bubbled in the process. I'm assuming that's because some sodium hydroxide reacted with the carbon dioxide in the air to form sodium carbonate. I got 6 grams of the sodium salt and 1.24 grams of the acid, DHDATA, I guess. This is a 94.3% recovery, and this magic loss in mass is going to be a theme for the rest of the video. I almost certainly could and should have used both of these forms in the following reaction, but I followed the patent, so I only used the sodium salt that precipitated from the original base hydrolysis methanol solution. I added it to an RBF, then poured in the only other reagent in this reaction, polyphosphoric acid, also known as PPA. 115% as phosphoric acid equivalent is, if I can read and do math properly, unlikely, the same as containing around 85% phosphorus pentoxide. PPA is an awesome reagent for condensation reactions, and it works really well for cyclization reactions that are condensations. Maybe you know, and maybe you don't. Phosphoric acid etches glass if it's heated, but I think there has to be water present for that, so the polyphosphoric acid just straight up didn't etch any of the glass that was used in this, even though I heated it pretty hot. Because it's such a condensed form of phosphoric acid, it is thick as hell, not in the good way, in the way that it's syrupy and you have to heat it up to make it pourable. I used a boiling water bath to heat it up, then poured it through a funnel, then used a heat gun to blow as much of it through the funnel as possible since some was sticking to it. There's a stir bar in the RBF that won't do anything for a while since the mixture is a powder and a thick syrup. I put a drying tube on the RBF like the procedure says to do, even though it's probably not crucial to the reaction working, and dropped the RBF in a preheated oil bath. It's at about 90 to 100 degrees at this point, and I need it to be around 125 to 130 degrees for the reaction. A couple other patents doing very similar reactions with the same precursors have different temperatures, like 140 to 150 is the range that you're supposed to use, but I don't know. It works, but I have to heat the mixture for longer than the hour that that patent says to because it won't stir. You're supposed to add the precursor to the acid, not the acid to the precursor, which probably was a factor in this, not working as well as it should have and taking a lot longer than it should have. It starts to stir at about the hour and a half point, and the color change is completed after about three hours total, just like with the base hydrolysis reaction. At this point it was late, so I took it out of the oil bath and did the next step the next day, and this was to pour the reaction mixture into water and ice. It was supposed to be poured at around 100 degrees, but since I had let it cool overnight, I had to heat it up with my heat gun, and it got most of it out, but I had to boil water in the reaction vessel to get what was left in the flask out. I also dipped the joint of the drying tube in the beaker since some of the goop was stuck to that too. Then I filtered off the precipitate from the forbidden strawberry banana smoothie. 
I used the precipitate immediately after drying it and forgot to get a picture or video of it, but it was just a powder with the same color as the solution. Quinacridone is reddish violet, so when I got to this salmon colored product, I knew for a fact that what I'd been working with up until now was all the dihydrocherethalate compounds, and this was dihydroquinacridone. I needed to oxidize it to quinacridone, and one of the patents had a procedure for this by boiling with nitrobenzene. I had some nitrobenzene left over from what I made for my scrub synthesis video, so I used that. Immediately upon coming into contact with the nitrobenzene, the dihydroquinacridone changed color. I refluxed it for an hour, like the patent said, not three times as long this time. After cooling, I filtered the solution to get what definitely didn't look reddish violet until I washed it with ethanol and stirred it. It was chunky when it dried, so I ground it in my mortar and pestle, but a lot of it seemed to adhere to them. So I poured in some sulfuric acid and gently heated to dissolve it, poured that into water, boiled it, and got what you see in this beaker, in addition to what's on this watch glass. I weighed it when it was in chunks, and I am officially the proud owner of 2.61 grams of quinacridone. Particle size and crystal phase are both major factors in what color the quinacridone is, and oddly enough, I don't have the instrumentation used for measuring BET surface area or X-ray crystallography. There are alpha, beta, and gamma phases for the crystal structure, and I'll find out which one is needed for quinacridone gold. What I do know is that my melting point apparatus tops out at around 310 degrees, and this quinacridone isn't affected at all up to that temperature. This tracks with it having a melting point of 390 degrees. Such a high melting point makes quinacridone an extremely appealing pigment for coloring plastics that are thermally processed. Here's a breakdown of yields and stuff for what was done in this video. I wanted to see if I could recover any quinacridone that might still have been dissolved in the nitrobenzene, so I distilled it off and got this absolutely beautiful tar. Given the thermal stability, any quinacridone that might have been in it shouldn't have decomposed, but I'm not completely sure since I let the distillation go a little longer than I should have. I'll be making a lot more quinacridone for a future video, so I'll find out whether or not any was dissolved by better monitoring the distillation then. I don't have enough nitrobenzene to conveniently make quinacridone from the shitload of DDAT I made in the previous video without way too many batchwise reactions, so I have at least two ideas to try, and of course you'll see those or you'll hear me talk about them in future videos. Time will tell. The yields overall weren't that great, but that's okay. Patents aren't all that reliable for reactions and yields, but I still have a couple more methods to try, so I have faith that some of the reactions will get a lot better yields than this one did, because I did actually lose quite a bit in the process, so we'll see how that goes. And I think that's about all I've got. If you enjoyed watching this, like, comment, share, and or subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.